Hello everyone, welcome to today's guide, which is Valorant for Beginners. This guide is primarily focused for anyone that is either new, brand new to the game, or maybe you have played other games similar to uh, the tech FPS genre, but obviously I think Valorant has its own spice on the genre, which is pretty cool. So the question is, what is Valorant? Valorant is a team-based 5v5 tactical first-person shooter, which features a wide cast of agents with different personalities, play styles, and abilities. Today I'll be covering multiple tips in the game to help you if you're playing ranked for the first time, even deathmatch, or maybe a more chill mode like Spike Rush. Also, you can use the timestamps in the video if you're looking for a specific segment. So the first topic we're going to be talking about is in-game settings. And I would personally say that in-game settings are really, really important because it kind of expresses your personality. Uh, each player plays with their own thing that they feel just feels right, you know? You, there is no such thing as like the best settings. Like everyone is different. Everyone likes certain things. Some people like high sense, some people like low sense. And so I would highly suggest that you go into the settings and fill around with certain stuff, especially sensitivity. I think sensitivity is a big one. So the cool thing about the console version is there's two different sensitivities. You have your hip fire sense and you also have the focus mode sense. This is personally the first time I've ever seen a console implementation of dynamic sensitivities. And I think it is a really, really cool and really good implementation of it because uh, obviously I'm not a console player, but my first time jumping into Valorant on console was kind of easy, I'd say. It was definitely very user-friendly and everything kind of felt right, I would say, for the controls. The hipfire sense, you can normally use a faster sense. Uh, that is if you have to clear angles a lot harder, clear a lot more of those 50-50 angles. If you have to shoot a silver dart that's flying really far past your face or maybe a rays flying through the air with the satchels. And then what you would use the focus mode sensors is uh, for more of the micro adjustments, which normally wouldn't really happen on console. But since Valorant is a really precise uh, tactical first person shooter, you do want to have the ability to make micro adjustments. It is really important in this game in specific because of the gunplay. Unlike other games uh, where you might be more run and gun, this game definitely requires a lot more precision, but we'll get into that more later on a different topic. Also, another thing that I would recommend is changing your crosshair. I think the crosshair should be just the right amount where it's visible, where you can see the crosshair clearly, but it doesn't take up too much uh, space on the screen and allows you to focus on both your crosshair and the enemies. I have made a more in-depth guide on my YouTube channel previously. So if you want to go check that out, that will be right here. <laughs> I don't I don't know where to put it. You can click the box to view the video, which I do go more in depth about settings in general. It is more catered towards PC players, but I'm sure that there is a few things that some console players could pick up if keybinds are the same or just some certain stuff like maybe the why to use left hand over right hand. So just certain stuff like that. Definitely would check it out if you are interested and want to go more in depth about it. But now let's jump into the second topic, which is team play and communication. Since team play and communication is such a focus in Valorant, in my opinion, I'll be going over a few concepts that I personally apply to myself. And uh, I think that uh, would be really helpful to a lot of people. Teams that typically play together, win together. And what this basically means is being able to work off your teammates, being able to get along with your teammates. I think it's all really, really important. And uh, I think at the end of the day, whatever team gets along with each other better, whatever team uh plays together better uh as a group rather than just individually i think will normally come out on top at the end of the day an important rule i usually use um outside of gaming even not even necessarily just in game is you normally do things better when you enjoy them and so what this means is when you are having fun when you're enjoying the moments when you're living in the best time and you're just like having uh having a laugh and just enjoying everything about the game uh, I do think is really important and not only will it just make time pass by quicker, uh, make games like, it, honestly, it can make games kind of addicting sometimes when you, when you have too much fun. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I will say that it will improve your focus because your brain will be more stimulated. Uh, you'll be smiling a lot more. So I think stuff like that is really important. And so to tie this in, I would suggest you not to be toxic. Um, try to be nice to your teammates. Don't be angry. Don't be uh raging and the golden rule treat others the way you want to be treated i think that is also very important and i do think that the best games come out of uh, communities that are able to treat everyone respectfully in terms of communication in valorant i would say there's two different types of communication there is info communication and there is command communication so what info communication is i think in the name it sounds pretty self-explanatory where you are use you're calling something that is based on like information so it'd be like oh there's two players on this side of the map oh there's three players on this side of the map 
oh, this KJ was last seen B. They have two ultimates, be careful. Like stuff like that is more of like info communication. And I do think it is really important to be able to do both. Um, the next one would be called uh, command communication. And this would be more of more of like a command, I would say, like also in the name, uh, kind of like how info is tied in. Uh, this is the way I like to normally think about it in, in my head. But uh, command calls or command uh, communication is normally when you want to do something or you want your teammates to work together. So let's say, um, oh, let's go A this round. Uh, just as an easy strat, like everyone let's rush A, let's rush B. Stuff like this is command communication. Or uh, could you throw this flash here for me? Like your teammate could be on KO and you could be um, requesting a flash. And so that could be a command communication. And stuff like this, being able to uh, effectively switch between the two constantly whenever you need to use them uh, is really, really important in my opinion. And then I guess I'll tie into the third one, which is dead comms. Uh, obviously, this is not really like backseating. Um, some people can view it as backseating, and I do think there is a fine line that you can draw between dead comms and backseating. Uh, if you thought about it as if uh, the entire game was chess, right? And while you're playing the game, you're kind of like a, a chess piece. But as soon as you die, because you can see all the point of views of your teammates, it kind of is like you become the chess master and you see the game board entirely. So you're able to actually direct people and make people work together rather than actually just being uh, on your own POV and focus on your crosser. A lot of time, you also doing these dead comms allows your teammates to focus on their crosshairs uh, possibly performing better individually, but then you're able to make a massive, uh, a master plan to uh, kind of make everyone work together, which I think is really, really cool. So this is a, a agent based game. So there's a lot of agent abilities and ultimates. Each agent comes with three abilities, one of which will be a signature ability, which is a free ability the agent gets every round. And on some agents can actually refresh either via cooldown or from getting a certain amount of kills to refresh the ability. Uh, this is not on all agents, but on the sum that can use it, it is really strong. Stuff like this is like the signature ability of the character and allows you to use it more frequently uh, through multiple rounds or just in the sing uh, singular round by itself. So the ultimate abilities are these really round changing abilities that you can use when you collect enough orbs. And how you get these ult orbs is either you pick them off off the ground, you get a kill, you die, you get a plant or diffuse. So those are the different ways that you can get an ult orb. And so being able to farm a lot of our alt orbs and use them more frequently will allow you to have more of these round changing ultimates more frequently. So I do think it is really important to utilize your alts when you can, uh, especially if you think the situation calls for it. And now the cool thing about the ultimate abilities is because each character is so different, the ultimate abilities are just drastically different. Whereas KO has an ultimate ability to remove all the enemy's abilities for a while, which can be pretty strong. Or Jet has really flashy knives to take out the enemies and you can fly through the air with them. You can use them like a shotgun. The knives are really, really fun, really flashy, really cool to watch. Since the ultimate abilities can be so strong and being able to utilize them together with other characters' abilities or combining ults together really creates some interesting and cool, fun combos that you can collaborate with your teammates. Now, the fourth topic I'm going to be going into is roles and responsibilities. So in Valorant, there's four different roles. There is the Duelist, Initiator, Sentinel, and Controller. Uh, for the Duelist, I would say this is mainly your entry frag, your first point of contact, someone that actually likes playing really aggressive, someone that likes getting in the enemy's faces. The Duelist can be quite flashy of a role, and so it can be quite fun to play and definitely very stimulating for a lot of players. Uh, I, I myself used to be... Uh, quite a duelist player. I would say that the duelist kits are normally focused around self-sufficiency and uh, being able to make space and create space to let your teammates further capitalize off of it. Now, if I'm looking at the second role, which I think is a really good pairing with the duelist is initiator. Initiator basically allows you to set your team and yourself up for success with your utility. So there's two different types of initiators. There is info initiators and there's uh, flash initiators. So info initiators are like Sova and Fade, where you're able to throw out uh, utility to gain information, to give your team wall hacks for a short period of time. And it basically allows you to constantly update information so you never feel like you're starved of it. This type of initiator definitely sets your team up more for aggressive plays, I would say. Now, after talking about the info initiators, I'm gonna be talking about the flash initiators. Flash initiators are characters with flash bangs in their kit, uh, hence the name. It's very, uh, very easy to kind of categorize them. But 
uh, there would be Sky, Breach, Gecko, and Ko. Now, on some Flash Initiators, you do get some pseudo info with uh, certain abilities, such as Sky's Bird, which when pops, you can kind of tell when someone gets hit by it, uh, allowing for some really passive information to genuinely find out if someone's in a location. It's not true information like how a Fade or Silva would be, um, and that's why it's not like an info, info initiator, but it is really nice. Another example of this in a Flash Initiator Kit is KO Flash that you can easily left click to throw for your teammates to blind the enemies and allows your teammates to get the upper hand when they are peeking them. So these types of abilities basically allow your teammates to get space and through that space you're able to basically play a little bit even easier rounds. I do think life is really hard without initiator so I do think it's a really really good role. Uh, obviously you're not going to be in the starlight constantly kind of like how uh, Duelist is but you will have your moments to shine. Now I'm going to be talking about Sentinel. Sentinel is basically more of a passive playstyle I'd say. Sentinels on defense side usually like to lock down certain parts of the map. They like to hold flanks. Um, they like to lurk. So certain stuff with Sentinels, I do think uh, is a more passive play style. So if you do find yourself wanting to just kind of chill, wait, uh, wait for the enemies to come to you rather than you come to them, I do think Sentinel is really good for that. And then the fourth rule, which is controller. Uh, personally, I, I'm currently playing a lot of controller. Uh, controller is really, really strong. I do think they can make the difference uh, in the game, especially when you throw out smokes that are very useful because controllers, just like the name suggests, allows you to control different areas of the maps with your smokes. A lot of cool stuff you can do with controllers, for example, is doing one ways. For example, you can one way and a main on ascent to hold down the a main uh, choke points and make it a lot harder for your enemies to take that space without having to use a lot of utility or without suffering major casualties. The controller also is very supportive, I would say, as well. There is a lot of stuff in your kit that allows you to support both you and your teammates, such as Omen having a paranoia that you can throw out as a flash to blind enemies. I'll talk about two of my favorite combinations with agents and their roles. So for an example, I'm going to pair a duelist and initiator together. You can do Yoru and Fade. Now, what Fade's ultimate is that basically goes out in a wave in front of Fade and takes out all the audio of players that get hit by it. Now, the thing about Yoru, Yoru is a really cool duelist where his kit is entirely made on like outplaying people and teleporting in. It does make a lot of noise though, but because of the Fade and Yoru pairing, you can actually take out the, the, the sound of the enemy players, allowing you to TP in for free. So if you pair either the uh, Yoru Gatecrash or his ultimate even with the Fatal, it can be really, really crazy of a combo and also really cool. Uh, the enemies won't really know what's coming to them. So I do think that is probably one of my more favorite combos that I've seen. Another combo I'd think of is, let's see, I would do a Sentinel with a controller. So I'd probably say Astra and Sage. Now Sage has an ability that basically, uh, it's called a Gravity Well, and it basically sucks everyone into the middle of it. Um, now you can run away from the, the middle of the suck and basically not get affected by it. But if you pair it with a Sage and Sage slows at the same time that Asher uses the gravity well, the enemies will just be stuck inside because of their movement speed being slowed and them being constantly pulled to the center. It allows for easy kills in the center of the gravity well, uh, which is also quite a cool combo. I normally see this utilized on split B where the Sage will be playing uh, Heaven Mail and then the Asher will be playing Sight. So this is just a few examples of some cool combos that you can do with different character roles and abilities. I would highly suggest you jump into the game, grab a duo queue partner and experiment with what you can find. Uh, there's unlimited combos in my opinion of what you can do. So the possibilities are endless. On to the final topic of today. I'm gonna to be talking about movement and crosshair placement. So a unique thing about Valorant is the movement and the way that you use the gunplay is a lot different than other FPS titles. Whereas in Valorant, you actually have to stand still to shoot accurately. This might be unheard of to some different players, especially coming from different titles, but when you get used to it, it feels really rewarding to be able to master it and even refine your craft even more. Now, um, there's this thing called counter strafing. So counter strafing is basically uh, shooting uh, while you're standing still, but then taking a step and then waiting for your recoil to reset. And then while you're waiting for your recoil to reset, then you stop again and you shoot again. It is a lot harder to shoot someone that is moving compared to someone that's standing still. So that is 
the main concept of counter strafing it makes it so you're able to utilize your recoil effect uh, effectively and move while your recoil is resetting uh basically it will just help you not become an easy target to shoot. Having good crosshair placement will basically make your life easy where you don't have to flick as much. Players with good crosshair placement will typically feel like they're playing a lot easier of a game compared to players that are playing without any crosshair placement. Now, what crosshair placement is, is basically having your crosshair constantly at head level, having your crosshair at a distance from an angle at which you can react to. And so uh, this basically allows you to move your crosshair less and focus more on reacting to the shot rather than having to flick to the sh uh, to flick to shoot. Now, um, this is really, really utilized at high level play. An easy way that I would suggest uh, learning how to do crosshair placement is actually jumping into a deathmatch lobby. Uh, crosshair placement is really map dependent, so I do think from learning the maps, you learn about crosshair placement based on how you know certain angles and how you know that enemies will peak in a certain angle. So knowing the maps can be really important um, and also just in general, just feeling out the game. So make sure you're aiming towards head level. Obviously, there's some exceptions. For example, if you're using an op, you normally want to aim for the body just because it is a one hit kill. But normally for rifles and pistols and other weapons like that, you do want to be aiming at head level because that is how you maximize your damage. So I'm going to be talking about three different types of peaks that you can do. There is a jiggle peak, a wide peak and a jump peak. A jiggle peak basically is when you go to a corner and you slightly like shuffle your body in and out of the corner making it really really hard for the enemies to shoot you and it's kind of like if they just see your arm and you're able to see them so it is a really really strong tactic to gain information when you don't really have any info uh, so now what a wide swing is is basically swinging an angle with confidence swinging as if you want to actually kill the enemy and this is really, really good, especially if you are taking a really favorable 1v1 or you know that there's someone there and you want to challenge them. I do not suggest wide swinging when there is multiple enemies in your crosshair because <laughs> there's a high chance you might die, uh, which can be quite unfortunate. It does happen. Now, the last type of peak I want to talk about is jump spotting. So when I was actually playing the console version of Valorant, which is really cool, uh, they added jump spotting, making it a little bit easier for the console players. And normally on PC, it's a lot harder to do a jump spot. You have to kind of manage your keys a lot differently. But on console, if you just jump and then use your joystick to move in and out of the corner, it will allow you to basically get information a little bit louder, but a lot more safer. I do think this is a better way to deal with oppers as it makes the oppers life really, really hard because then they have to flick to shoot you rather than just holding the angle and just reacting off of you running into their crosshair. So it is really strong. Now, there is a few differences with jiggle peeking versus jump spotting. Uh, I think jiggle peeking, it basically allows you uh, to be ready to have your gun at all times. So if there is someone close to you that you don't expect, it allows you to basically recover your crosshair. Uh, your accuracy will be completely fine and you'll be able to actually react to the enemy. And another thing is it is completely quiet. Now, if you're talking about jump spotting, jump spotting is kind of risky if you don't know where someone is and you don't know exactly if how close they are because if they are too close to you because of the jump spot and you jumping when you land you won't be fully accurate so uh, it can be kind of risky if you don't use it correctly but it is a really powerful tactic to deal with operators as I said before and it is also really loud now uh, I was talking about earlier but because on the console version there is a new mode called focus mode this basically allows you to use a second sensitivity as a slower sense to use to get a lot more precise aim for when you have to hold an angle uh, I was trying it out a lot and it is really really good to use and utilize fully obviously I'm not the best console player but I did find myself hitting a lot more shots when I was actually using the focus mode holding an angle and reacting off of that on a slower sense than actually trying to hip fire on a really fast sense. So I do think you just want to find out what sense is good for you. Now, since it is on console, there is a little bit of aim assist. I would say it's just the perfect amount. Uh, aim assist is quite needed for console games, in my opinion, just because uh, this game was primarily developed on PC. So this aim assist basically will improve the gunplay and make it a lot easier for the console players to have more precise aim. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about pre-aiming. So pre-aiming angles, you want to hold an angle in which that you can react to personally. So everyone has different reaction speeds. So obviously you don't wanna to hold too tight of an angle where you can't react if someone swings, but you also don't wanna to hold too wide of an angle where if someone jiggle peeks or someone does a slower peek that you can't react to that either. So being able to just play the game, find out what you like best and what fits you the most for holding an angle and pre-aiming. Now, a little tip I can give you a quick, quick life hack is if you're holding an angle 
and you're actually a distance at which you cannot hear the angle if the enemy swung or walk peeked, I would highly suggest that you hold for the wide swing, just because if they did wide swing and you weren't ready for it, uh, it can end up a lot of the time you dying. Likewise, you would want to do it on the other side, where if you can hear the angle, you can hold a lot tighter of an angle. Uh, if you do think that they're going to walk into your crosshair, it is really good. Now, uh, for clearing angles, for angle clearing, I would highly suggest that you do implement cross replacement into your game plan. Uh, it is really, really strong. It will make your life easier and make you build consistency. Uh, I do think cross replacement is a key to consistency. So mastering that concept is really important in my opinion, especially for this game. Now, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about on angles versus off angles. On angles are basically, typically where enemies will play. Uh, they're a little bit more, um, what's it called? They're a little bit more cookie cutter of angles. And you normally want to clear out on, on angles constantly. And on angles normally allow enemies to also fall back if they feel like they're in danger. I do think that clearing on angles is really important, but there is something called uh, off angles that people will do quite frequently. Now, off angles are basically different from on angles. Uh, if I was thinking of an on angle, for an example, I'm gonna choose a scent again. I like doing uh, scent as a, a nice uh, example, but uh, when you're taking a main on attack side, a typical on angle that people might play is the corner of a main where they can see the sliver angle and shoot, but then fall back. This is an example of an on angle. Now, an example of an off angle, a more unconventional angle that people will play to throw off enemies' crosshairs, they will play an off angle to surprise you. So when you are clearing an on, on angle, you might accidentally walk into an off angle. And so this is kind of like an element of surprise, I would say. There's certain characters that have movement abilities or teleports of some sort. These characters typically can play off angles a lot more effectively because they're able to escape. Now, an off angle, typically you cannot escape after you've been spotted. So you can think of them as like a one and done angle sometimes. Now, characters like Reyna, Chamber, Jet, these characters can play off angles a lot easier because they're actually able to get out. Chamber can TP, Jet can dash away, and Reyna can use Dismiss to basically become invulnerable for a short period of time and run away. So these characters in specific are really, really good at off angles. So I do think it is really important when you are playing against even certain characters or playing as these characters, you want to utilize off angles more. When you're playing against them, you want to be careful of the off angles just because they're able to actually escape unlike other characters. Thank you everyone for watching my guides video um, on Valorant for Beginners. If this video helps you or if you want to see more tips and tricks, uh, guide videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I will be posting more videos like this, but I would probably do more intermediate advanced topics. Now, to all the new players that are playing Valorant for the first time, I hope this video was able to help you a little bit and you're able to apply some of these tricks into your own gameplay. I do hope that you're able to rank up and have fun playing Valorant.